we start the session today. Uh, those who haven't signed the list, please do it. It's your last chance. And uh, after this session, during the coffee break, we take the group picture uh, to upload in the website. So it will be uh, here, outside. They take the picture from uh, upstairs and it will be here. So wait a second before going to coffee, OK? OK. Yes. Okay. So good morning, everyone. Um, it's, we will start this morning section today, and the first speaker is Sofonso Bayona. Please, Sofonso. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to thank the organizers for the opportunity uh, of presenting uh, this, my, my work. Uh, my work is, uh, uh, and also for the uh, experience of uh, being in the, interacting with many, so many uh, good people, a uh, very nice uh, environment. Okay, so uh, my work is in collaboration with uh, uh, Jonathan Schock and, uh, from Cape Town University and Dimitris Soakos from uh, Athens University. So, uh, my name is Alfonso Balon Bayona and I work at the Rio de Janeiro Federal University. If, uh, well, this presentation is about this uh, uh, paper that is available uh, on JHEP and on archive. And uh, let us start. So the summary, uh, we'll start with an introduction of uh, magnetized fluids uh, with conformal symmetry. Uh, then I'll present uh, uh, just a very uh, short, very brief review. Can you hear me over there or at the bottom? Or? Yes, you can hear me. All right, all right. So uh, I'll, I'll give a brief re uh, review of uh, ADS-CFT and how it appears the magnetic black brain. Uh, this is the main topic, uh, the magnetic black brain. Uh, that, uh, it was initially, uh, originally found by uh, Docker and Krauss uh, and uh, it was the motivation of my, my, my work. Uh, on extending the uh, study of the thermodynamics of this uh, 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 magnetic black brain and how it, uh, it is, uh, the, uh, in, according to ADS-CFT, it is the gravity dual, the holographic dual of the uh, strongly coupled uh, super young Mills plasma with magnetic field. And then uh, I'll describe this uh, thermodynamics and uh, I will finish with some uh, small comparison, phenomenological comparison with a lattice QCD and with my conclusions. Okay, first of all, uh, how do you treat uh, this uh, magnetized fluid with conformal symmetry? Uh, with, when you have a, a magnetic field, as, as because of non-zero magnetization, you need to work with this uh, uh, magnetic enthalpy instead of the internal energy. And uh, you define also the Gibbs free energy, uh, the analog of uh, the Helmholtz free energy. And uh, the idea, if you have conformal symmetry, is that uh, you have, uh, because of scale, scale invariance, you can uh, find that the Gibbs free energy have to scale with the temperature. Let's say you have a, a theory in d dimensions, then it has to be scaled with t to the d. And with the volume, of course, and then it could be a function of little v, with little v is uh, the dimensionless uh, ratio of magnetic field with temperature, v v over t squared. So this is how it simplifies simplifies the, 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 the thermodynamic description of, uh, of a magnetic fluid with conformal symmetry. And again, uh, you can impose a, 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 a underscale transformations. All quantities have to scale for following the, these uh, rules of bile transformation. And then you end up that uh, the free energy have to scale in this way. The Gibbs free energy, while the uh, temperature, volume, and magnetic field has to scale in this way, it is easy to check just by dimensional analysis. And uh, then when you analyze this equation, you can differentiate this equation with respect to the scale parameter. 
and you find the uh, so-called equation of the state for a conformal fluid. So you have this question, but in this case with ma non-zero magnetic field. So it is the equation of the state that relates, uh, instead of the internal energy, here I have the magnetic enthalpy, here it is the pressure, volume, and here M it is the magnetization density. So this is the equation of the state of a conf magnetized conformal fluid in D dimensions. This is based on, uh, I follow some, uh, this is the uh, a paper that I follow initially for the uh, conformal fluid and also the thermodynamic ensemble was uh, following this book by Carlin. All right, uh, then uh, you, it is convenient to define when you have fixed volume, it is convenient to define the uh, densities, uh, Gibbs density, Helmholtz density, internal energy density, uh, sorry, this is enthalpy density, internal energy density, and entropy density. And then, uh, since uh, Gibbs free energy just scales with, in, let us now focus on four dimensions. So in four dimensions, the Gibbs free energy scales at by t to the four. So from this uh, small g of little v, uh, you can get everything. You can get all the other thermodynamic quantities. You can get, get the entropy, uh, all the quantities will always scale. Like for example, entropy scales with T cube, and the, the dimensionless rate is just a function of the of this uh, this 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 function g of b g of little b, and the same for Helmholtz free energy scales with T to the four. So all all these uh, uh, thermodynamic quantities in the conformal fluid they always scale appropriately, and you can get all all the uh, uh, the, the non-trivial dependence so with magnetic field by this function g, little g of little b. And so, uh, so I can uh, go forward and ca calculate also susceptibility, magnetic susceptibility from the magnetization, so here it is the magnetization, and then also the so-called pyromagnetic coefficient, which is also the derivative of magnetization, respect to temperature, so on. So you can get all these uh, thermodynamic quantities from, from, this, uh, from just one function. Uh, again, the, this is the equation of a state, uh, written in terms of densities. Uh, here you see a diff the magnetization appearing. And also, the, this, this is just another way of writing the equation of a state in terms of the Gibbs free energy. This minus 140s, it is typical of a conformal fluid, and this is the effect of magnetization. And so there's also another auxiliary identity between magnetization and susceptibility and so on. I can also calculate the uh, specific heat uh, and uh, the stress energy tensor. The stress energy tensor, I, I follow the uh, reference uh, uh, in ADSFT apl application to condensed matter, which is by this paper by Harnold, Koftun, Mueller, and such Dev that developed some, uh, I think it was based also on other uh, uh, papers for uh, magnetohydrodynamics. And uh, it, it basically, the idea is just ideal fluid, but uh, with an external source. If you have an external source, external field, you have a, 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 a coupling to the so-called polar, polarization, polarization tensor. And in our case, the, the, this uh, field strength is uh, just given by magnetic field, and the polarization tensor will just correspond to the magnetization. The stress energy tensor, it is diagonal in the rest frame, and uh, I can uh, calculate the, so the T0, the 0, 0 component is just the enthalpy density, whereas the spatial components are the, sorry. Sorry? It is, it is symmetric, it is symmetric. It is symmetric and it is, it is in the rest frame it is just diagonal. So it is symmetric and diagonal, but it is uh, non, non isotropic, non isotropic. The isotropy is broken because of magnetic field. So the, as a consequence you have uh, that the pressure along the x and y, x and y direction is uh, different from the pressure along the z direction where the magnetic field is. My, my question is uh, not isotropy, but uh, my question is, is this a symmetric tensor uh, in terms of the exchange between mu and nu? It is. It, it, it yes? is diagonal. 
Yeah, the, the last term a... on the previous page, it didn't look like so. So I, I, oh, I, right. I really want to understand. Oh, yes, 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 yes. I, I don't write. Yeah, I have to. Have Usually, to uh, so this tensor is uh, chosen to be a symmetric tensor. Of uh -huh. course, there is always ambiguity. So I, I'm very curious if uh, this is symmetric or a symmetric part is necessary or so because this is actually the central subject in the context of a spin hydrodynamics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is, it is symmetric, I think, as a consequence that F and M are anti-symmetric. Anti it's symmetric. I think you can exchange new and new, new and new, and, and exchange simultaneously rho, rho mu and rho nu. I think you can check that it is, it should be. Uh, okay, or, probably, that, so that term itself is right. not the symmetric, I, I right? I see, I see, I see what you mean. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know if in, in general it is, but uh, uh, if for the particular case of magnetic field, it becomes uh, uh, just trivially uh, 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 symmetric. So let's see, I have to check. Here. Um, yeah. I, Maybe you are right, but it is. I have been written in the in a symmetric way. Maybe I should symmetrize this this expression. Maybe that's the, what it is needed. But in the end, uh, for the particular case of magnetic field, I, I get the same result. But you are right. I think it is breaking uh, the symmetry. Uh, uh, yes, but right, right. But there is another point, right? That the, yes. I'm a bit confused by the second equation on the right with magnetization and susceptibility and this pyro magnetic yeah. thing. So shouldn't the magnetization just be chi times b? Why is the second term also appearing there? Uh, sh should uh, I mean, that's small magnetic it, it is for perhaps for a small b, but mm -hmm. where b is very small, probably this psi becomes. Uh, 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 not uh, subliving, probably. But in general, what you get is this. This, is su this susceptibility is not, sus it, it is not derivative uh, uh, of magnetization taking the zero limit. It's just, just, it's just the derivative of magnetization with respect to, to B. Is this. Mm -hmm. So it is not exactly the, because in, in many papers you find susceptibility after taking the limit B going to zero. So maybe if you take the limit B going to zero, probably I would guess that this guy will be subliving. And you will, uh, but it is, it is what you get when you consider uh, the full, this is like a full susceptibility. And the, sorry? Well, it depends, and so in some books you find it, uh, susceptibility defined as in this way, right? as the as derivatives of the just of the uh, second derivatives of the Gibbs free yeah. energy. Yeah, I think everybody heard, right? So I'm also confused because then, from my point of view, this wouldn't be a susceptibility; it would be something else. I mean, what we would usually call a susceptibility. Well, as I, as I said, some, some books on thermodynamics with magnetic field consider this as a susceptibility without taking the, the, the zero magnetic field limit. But we can discuss uh, about this afterwards. Uh, just, just I'd like to back, go back to the initial question of Kenji. Maybe there is also a physical reason for this uh, breaking of the symmetry of T mu nu. Maybe uh, the cost of rotation I, 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 may, maybe there is something else, but in principle, I, my uh, uh, an alternative would be to symmetrize, to write a symmetric version of, of it. Okay, let me go. Let me proceed. So I was uh, saying that the, there is an isotropy because of the magnetic field, so the pressures are different, and uh, the difference between the pressures is related to magnetization. You can also calculate the speed of sound along the, the direction of magnetic field, set direction, or along the transverse directions as well. And they are related to entropy and a specific heat and pyromagnetic coefficient. And now let me talk about the magnetic brain, how it arises in ADS-CFT. 
So in ADS-CFT, you, the, the main, uh, you consider a configuration of so-called DP brains that are non-perturbative objects in string theory that allow for open string description or closed string description. So when you consider open strings, you arrive at a super, super symmetric Jamis theory. This is so-called n equal four, the, su the maximally extended supersymmetric Jamis theory. Uh, but if, if instead you consider closed strings, what you get is a supergravity theory that arises from these closed strings. And the, 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 the metric that you find is a ADS5 crosses five. It is a, a, a string theory in 10 dimensions, or supergravity in 10 dimensions. And that uh, uh, led to the Malacena's conjecture that uh, type 2V supergravity in ADS5 crosses five should be dual to the strongly coupled regime of this uh, N equal four supergravity theory in four dimensions. So these are the pioneer papers. And then uh, the just to, uh, the, uh, just a snapshot of the, the ADS-CFT dictionary. This, uh, there is the mapping within the couplings, the young mills and the string coupling. Also the mapping within the uh, Toft coupling. This is the Toft coupling. And the, you always take the large N limit, large N C limit. And the, then the Toft coupling is mapped to the ADS radius through the string fundamental length in, in these units. And then the isometry of ADS5, isometry group of ADS5 maps to the conformal group in four dimensions. Isometry of S5 maps to the R symmetry group of this uh, supersymmetric theory. Fields in ADS5 crosses five maps to operators in the conformal theory. And you have a well-established uh, uh, dictionary to, for calculating correlation functions. You want to calculate correlation functions of the CFT, what you need is to consider the own shell a supergravity action for the fields that are dual to the to the operators. So you have some oper you want to calculate correlation function of these operators. What you need is to map these operators to fields in ADS and calculate the, uh, the on shell action. It's basically what I'm going to do, but for the metric, I will focus on the metric. And these are the, the uh, sorry, I just forgot finite temperature. When you consider finite temperature, you turn on the thermal state, and the thermal state is mapped to a, a black brain. That is asymptotically ADS-5. So this is the, the proposal by Witten. So these are the pioneer papers on the ADS-CFT dictionary, these two, and, the, and this one on the finite temperature extension. Now the topic of this uh, uh, presentation, the magnetic brain. To consider, the, to obtain a magnetic brain, you start with Einstein-Maxwell theory in five dimensions. Uh, then uh, with cosmological constant, negative cosmological constant. The gravitational coupling is fixed uh, for uh, as this uh, type to be super string theory. And then uh, you just evaluate the, uh, the Einstein, analyze the, so solve these Einstein Maxwell equations. Uh, uh, in the, you, basically, the, the, the field is the Maxwell field uh, will. Uh, this Maxwell ga this gauge field will turn on uh, uh, energy momentum tensor in, fi in five dimensions, and you solve these equations with for a particular ansatz. The ansatz is that you have a non-zero magnetic field, and uh, you have an isotropy, an, an isotropic metric. So this is a five-dimensional metric that carries this anisot anisotropy that is, is expected because of the magnetic field. And then there is some fa also funny rescaling that it is needed in order to solve the equations because it always appears this scale, RH, that is the horizon radius of the, of the black brain. So it is convenient to do that. And basically to work in a, uh, to move to a, a, a units where RH is equal to one. And then you have this system of, a, uh, this is the system of equations that you get after plugging these ansatz on the Einstein-Maxwell equations. Uh, from these equations, three are dynamical and one if it's, it's a constraint. The, uh, the first, uh, uh, Researchers that solved these equations were Docker and Krauss in 2009. And then we revisit this problem in order to investigate further the thermodynamics of this magnetic brain. And just some details on the, of the, some details of the uh, background of the metric. Asymptotically, it has to, near, sorry, near the horizon, this uh, G, zero, zero component of the metric has to go to zero. So it has a tailored expansion. Uh, whereas the other also have to, could go to a constant, the other components of the metric, but also admit some Taylor expansion. So these are the so-called horizon coefficients. 
So UH1, VH0, WH0. Whereas if you go near the boundary of uh, near, uh, near the boundary, the matrix has to be asymptotically ADS. It's a five-dimensional matrix that has to be asymptotically ADS near the boundary, so it has to satisfy this, uh, uh, this expansion. So these are the expansions for the, uh, uh, near the boundary will mean when this radial coordinate goes to infinity, R goes to infinity. So you get, uh, this is uh, ADS asymptotics, and you have some coefficients that you get, uh, um, in near the boundary, but the main coefficients are these, these three, sorry, these two, U infinity four and D infinity four. Those are, in ADS-CFT, those are called BEF coefficients because they will correspond, they will be mapped to the uh, vacuum expectation value of, uh, the expectation value of some operators in the, in the dual theory, in the conformance theory. The temperature also you can get uh, from the horizon coefficients, UH1, the entropy you get from the bekenstein hawking formula. It is related to the coefficients VH0, WH0. Uh, you can also get the dimensionless ratio of entropy and temperature. And the dimensionless ratio of magnetic field with temperature also related to the, this, uh, the, main, the, main the main parameter in this, in this uh, solution is this uh, tilde B. Tilde B is, uh, this rescaled original B that it is, uh, I forgot to say, no, it's here. It is related to the CFT uh, B, the, the B of the, of the dual theory by, by this uh, square root of three uh, factor. So you can, uh, in the, for, the, for the solution, for the metric, everything depends with this uh, tilde B. In particular, you can get uh, all the, the horizon coefficients as function of, of tilde B, this dimensionless ratio also as function of tilde B and, and so on. So as you see when tilde B goes to a square root of three, this uh, B over T square goes to infinity. So this is how you map a, a CFT a parameter to a, a, a 5D parameter. All right, so uh, then the thermodynamics. In order to calculate thermodynamics, we consider the uh, on-shell action you have the Einstein-Maxwell term, and you have the Gibbons-Hawking-York boundary term. When you evaluate those terms, you end up with a surface term at the horizon, this are equal one, and at the boundary as well. And then you uh, plug the asymptotic expansion for those uh, components of the metric, and you get this expression. This is the on-shell action. You have divergences that are expected. There are so-called UV divergences. Uh, you have even a logarithmic divergence because of the magnetic field, but you have also finite terms, and this is a very important term, this one, because it has to do with the horizon. This will, be, will lead us to, te to the entropy, entropy times temperature. So uh, you renormalize this action by considering a counter term, a covariant counter term. If you consider a diffeomorphism invariant counter term, then you get, a, you get this renormalized action. All the divergences, uh, are, uh, are canceled, and you, but there is a still an ambiguity uh, because of a finite counter term. In, or, uh, uh, in order to uh, get rid of this ambiguity, we, we arrive at a prescription of always subtracting any uh, thermodynamic quantity with the zero temperature quantity. For example, if you have the Gibbs free energy, the Gibbs free energy is given uh, for any temperature is given by this expression, but if I subtract the, uh, with a zero temperature uh, result, I can get rid of this ambiguity. Because uh, the zero temperature uh, is, uh, 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 is, is the same. This term will be the same at zero temperature. I can carry on with the, now with the expectation value of the stress energy tensor operator, and uh, there is the dictionary in ADS-CFT to calculate. I, I won't give too many details. Just telling you that uh, I, in the end I get a uh, a, ten, a stress energy tensor that is, is compatible with the analysis that I showed at the beginning of the presentation that we, of the, what you expect for a conformal magnetized conformal fluid. It is an isotropic, and uh, you have the, 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 this uh, difference between the pressure in the transverse direction and pressure in the, magnet, and in the direction of the magnetic field. In this, in this way of renormalizing, I get the uh, stress energy tensor that whose trace vanishes, which is uh, uh, 
compatible with conformal symmetry, but there are other prescriptions where instead of this, you can, you can get a non diffeomorphism uh, uh, renormalis uh, counterterm, and you get an anomaly. But even if you get an anomaly, if you subtract the zero temperature result, in the end, you get a, a zero trace. Just to finish now, uh, I'll present some numerical results for the, uh, for the thermodynamic quantities. So these two plots are for the uh, Gibbs free energy and the entropy. The blue curves are uh, uh, the main results, while the orange and red are just approxima analytical approximations. Analytical results for the red one is for a large B, while the orange is for a small B. The green one is zero B. So in, interestingly, what happens is that, uh, for example, for the entropy, the entropy is initially scales with T cube, but then for very large B, what happens is that it scales with B times T. This S over T cube will scale linearly with B over T squared. And this is consistent with the dimensional reduction, as I will say a little bit more later. I also calculate uh, magnetization. Uh, you have some kind of RG flow for the uh, magnetization, susceptibility as well, pyromagnetic coefficient, and so on. Uh, speeds of sound, well, so I calculate also a specific heat, but perhaps the most interesting result is about the speeds of sound. You have a speeds of sound uh, along the transverse direction and along the Z direction, the direction of magnetic field. One, the, the, the speed of sound along the, the direction of magnetic field is Z direction. It, uh, it goes to, it, it goes to, to one. It, 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 is, it is this one, it will increase. And it, go, it goes to one, while the other speed of sound along the transfer direction, it, it goes to zero. So these, these, these plots are for different values of magnetic field, but as a function of temperature. In, in a conformal fluid, a magnetized fluid, when you go to large magnetic field, it's, the, it's equivalent to go to uh, low temperatures. So if you go to low temperatures, one speed of sound goes to one, while the other goes to, uh, uh, to zero. And as I said, this is consistent with this dimensional reduction from three plus one to one plus one. And, and uh, in the gravity uh, uh, approach, you, you see that as a, as a uh, RG flow with, between a black brain and this uh, BTZ are two uh, black brain, where BTZ is a three-dimensional black brain. Right? This Bañado, Statel, Bonsanelli, black brain. Just to finish, uh, uh, some plots of comparison to lattice. Uh, we consider the pressure along the ma direction of magnetic field, this PZ, pressure, uh, pressure along the transverse direction, P PX, and uh, for different values of the, of the temperature, this red, blue, and, and green correspond to different values of the temperature. One, one is always uh, larger than the other. PZ is larger than, than PX. And the, the, the dots with error bars are lattice results. And just, it's just to show that at least qualitatively, it goes as uh, uh, this uh, conform magnetized conformal fluid has an anisotropy that looks qualitatively similar to what is found in lattice QCD. And this is the magnetization, magnetization as a function of temperature, and for uh, different values of uh, a magnetic field, uh, uh, red, blue, green, and gray, as, as you increase the magnetic field, you go from this red, blue, red, blue green, and gray, and uh, the, these, these, these dots, uh, uh, that yeah, it, it almost, almost become like a thick line. This is lattice whilst the, the, the thin lines are uh, our results. Uh, and it is, uh, uh, okay, this of course not quantitatively, quantitatively it is quite different, but at least qualitatively, it's okay. And just to finish uh, my conclusion, so we use the ADA DSCFT correspondence to investigate the strongly coupled regime of this super Yamis plasma in the presence of uh, magnetic field we obtain a Gibbs free energy density and a stress energy tensor consistent with uh, magnetized fluid with conformal symmetry. Uh, thermodynamic quantities uh, uh, at large magnetic fields are compatible with dimensional reduction of the conformal field theory. Anisotropy within the pressures 
uh, is qualitatively similar to the quark gluon, what is uh, observed for the quark gluon plasma. And food future directions include uh, incorporate confinement, color symmetry breaking in order to describe uh, magnetic catalysis and invest magnetic catalysis, perturbations as well to investigate the uh, magnetohydrodynamics via holography. That's all. Questions? Uh, thank you, Alfonso. Uh, very nice talk. Uh, you said that you subtract the, the t equals zero uh, terms in order to um, subtract the divergences. But uh, in this case, you, you don't have uh, any contribution to the magnetized vacuum, for example, or uh, I think you are you're taking all this away. And so I, I, I think it's uh, maybe yes. this, is, this is possible only in some, uh, I don't know, yes, high, it, it very high temperature or something, because uh, if not, uh, you're avoiding this uh, Yeah, it is a price, let's say, uh, it is a price that we pay in order to get a very simple description that is compatible with the, the analysis that I showed at the beginning of the, uh, what you expect for a magnetized conformal fluid. Otherwise, you will have to deal with ambiguities in the renormalization procedure at zero temperature and, in how, and with the anomaly. The anomaly that is, uh, 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 you, you may expect because of the, uh, having a, a, a magnetic field. You have a constant, you may, there are some papers that have found a constant anomaly, like that's B squared, constant B squared, at zero temperature that is also present, will be also present at finite temperature. But there's, there is some ambiguity, there could be some ambiguity in this, uh, these results, and for that uh, uh, reason, we prefer just to just get rid of the, so this, this subtraction allows you to get rid of any ambiguity in the normalization procedure. But it's not necessary to cancel the divergences. You can cancel the divergences, without that prescription. But that prescription is to avoid the finite ambiguity due to the renormalization scheme. Different renormalization schemes could give you different results at zero temperature. So in order to cancel that, we do the subtraction. Yeah, but uh, so in summary, this is, uh, can be, uh, you can use it for high temperatures, basically. Yes, yeah, that's right. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think we, you can trust our results for high temperatures. Okay, so yeah, my my question is about the phase transition. So the, uh, yeah, actually, you, you you made a comparison to the lattice QCD, but of course the matter content is a bit, very different, and so such kind of a comparison is a little bit dangerous. But uh, my question is, mm -hmm. uh, of course, within this uh, framework, without flavor brain, uh, still you can discuss a Hawking phase transition. And uh, that might be affected by the magnetic field. Uh, that is a very interesting question. What, what is the result? Yeah, that, that's a very good, that's a very good uh, question. So did, did, you, did you check the Hawking page in, transition, in, B dependence, or in the, no? In, in this uh, uh, paper, uh, in this project, we just, have, we just consider the deconfined phase always. Uh, we, we don't uh, br uh, break conformal symmetry in any other way. We, we don't bring uh, uh, confinement. We don't have confinement. So there is no deconfinement transition here. So deconfinement transition is when you have, when you have at zero temperature, you need a confined phase. In order to do that in ADS-CFT, you have to uh -huh. introduce something else, like a, for example, a dilaton that breaks the- Oh, I see, I see, area. I see, I see, I see. Now, now I understand. Then mm -hmm. may, maybe you can introduce a Caruso Klein compactification and then discuss that. Mm -hmm. that, that there has been some interesting, interesting words by, by Gursoy, Gursoy, ah, Kritsis, yes, yes, I, I, I uh, magnetized, too. also by Noronha uh, mm -hmm. and collaborators, uh, and it has some, uh, uh, build, have built some more realistic models that they look more close to, closer yeah. to, to lattice QCD. Okay, okay. Just a quick one. Yes. Uh, the B you used at the end is the bulk magnetic field or the boundary magnetic field, <laughs> since they yeah. are not the same. <laughs> It gets a little bit confusing. It is the ba the, the boundary. Uh, the boundary I, magnetic field. It is calligraphic B. Well, uh, calligraphic. The bulk was not calligraphic. Or I, I call it tilde B. Yeah. The, the match is done. It was done by Docker and Kraus initially at the, for this uh, supersymmetric Yamil theory. They compare uh, some uh, gauge anomaly by considering a Chern-Simons term 
in, in five dimensions. And that's how you get exactly. One is uh, related to the other by a factor of a square root of three. Mm -hmm. Okay, please thank the speaker again while on time. Thank you.